I had a person lined up to prepare my headdress. I couldn't find her. <laughs> Friends, you may not know my name. Most people over the centuries, the millennia, have just called me the innkeeper. Maybe, maybe it doesn't matter what my name is, but I can tell you that I've taken a lot of heat over the centuries for being the nincompoop who sent the woman great with child down to the barn to give birth. Perhaps I, perhaps I deserved that. You can read all about it in your, your Gospel of Luke chapter 2. Uh, there the words are right there. 2,000 years, I still can't get away from these words. Let's read them together. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus. Anybody got a Bible? <laughs> Is it back? Well, just in case. Close. Close. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph, you want to read with me? Let's read together. <laughs> Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. This is the word of God for the people of God, and together we say... Thanks be to God, there was no place for them in the end. <sighs> Friends, actually, it was, it was worse than that. It was worse than you, you realize. I've been told that uh, you have a pastor in this church who, who looks kind of like me, who's a, a bit of a history and linguistics nerd. If you see him, if you see him, tell him that, in fact, we might not in the 21st century understand the word in the way that it was actual, actually originally intended. Notice that I'm not in there. There's no mention of an innkeeper. Perhaps I'm assumed, okay? But it turns out that the word translated as in is the Greek word katalyama, katalyama, which doesn't really mean hotel, a small hotel in the 21st century sense. It means guest room. There was no room for them in the guest room. You can call me the innkeeper if you want to, but in truth, it, it's worse than that. It was my house. It was my house. And see, all of the family was there. They all came to stay in their ancestral home for the registration under Quirinius, and I, and I did what I thought I had to do. I, I thought I did the right thing by putting the older folks in the guest room. That's what you're supposed to do, right? We had some older folks in the family, and it just made sense that they would be there in the most comfortable space. Joseph and Mary, I, I, I don't even remember how I, was, how I was related to Joseph. I think he was my second cousin once removed. What does that even mean? They were young, they were healthy. I didn't know the baby would come that night. I thought they'd be fine down there in the barn. What I should have done is give them my room. And I wish I had. But you know, perhaps there was something bigger going on that night than I realized. You know, I would, I would watch that boy as he grew, become, became a man, and, and uh, I followed his life. I was a huge fan of, of his life, and it seems like every other day I was hearing some story about him being rejected and despised. I was perhaps the first person to reject him by sending his family down into the barn, but I certainly wasn't the last. 
Every day someone was making his life difficult, and I hate that. I hate that, but at the same time, at the same time, I can't move past the sense that a life of being despised and rejected, the life of a suffering servant, wasn't his choice. I don't think it excuses my mistake, right? I I wish I had given them my room. But you know, we're all despised and rejected in this life, and how comforting is it, how comforting is it to know that God understands, that God too has walked on this earth and experienced the hardships and the pains and the sufferings and the indignities that we experience, that God identifies with our suffering. When the birth pangs began, I could hear her. I could hear her, her cries. See, see, this is maybe the other thing that, that you might not have realized. I didn't put them out in a, a barn or cave away from the house. No first century person would have put their animals in a barn or cave away from the house. Our livestock was our livelihood. We kept our best animals close. Thieves were everywhere. Wild animals were everywhere. The barn was the first floor of the house inside the walls. And so when she started to cry out, I could hear her. I could hear her and I felt so guilty. But after some time, after some time, Her cries stopped, replaced by what I can only describe as a holy silence. It was as if the room, the house, the world breathed. And then I heard it. Then I heard it the most beautiful sound I've ever heard. Another cry, the tender cry of an infant. Something within me leapt, and I couldn't help but follow that sound. I moved to the stairs, not knowing what was carrying me along, and before I knew it, I was at the bottom of the stair. And I looked across the room, and and there in the candlelight I saw Mother, father, sitting next to a a trough. I found that I couldn't speak, but my eyes must must have spoken for me, asking the question, may I? Mary's eyes answered warmly, and so I moved to the manger. And there, there in bands of cloth, a beautiful child. Everything else fell away. Time, space, proportion, gone. It was just me and him as I felt an eternal oneness spread out before me, the oneness of generations past and generations to come. And then impossibly, impossibly, his his eyes opened. They were the milky eyes of a newborn child. And so I knew he couldn't see me, and yet I also knew that he could see me that he knew me, that he always had, that he knew my, my dreams, my hopes, my pain, my suffering, my grief. He knew it and saw it all. And suddenly I, I felt overcome by a greater wholeness than I had ever experienced in my life. I knew that, that it didn't matter that I had failed to give his family space in my house so long as I would give him 
space in my heart. I leaned in close. The universe was a candlelit sphere a few meters wide. I listened, and then I heard it, like a, like a voice, but, but not a voice. Wordless words, at once both microscopic and universal, like a memory resounding in the deepest canyons of my soul. Take heart, it is I. 